pretty recently, uh, we did a, a reference solution related on uh, consuming a multi-tenant APIs within the Microsoft Viva Connection Adaptive Card extensions. And, and we wanted to have a 15-minute story related on uh, what is available. And this is a reference solution, a kind of a blueprint, uh, which is demonstrating how to make these things happen. But let's have a quick look on a few slides first uh, on, on uh, why would you do this. So first of all, just a recap, uh, of course. Uh, the Microsoft 365 opportunity uh, is huge for the partner ecosystem. Uh, we have more than 250 uh, million monthly active users in Microsoft Teams, and we have more than 200 million monthly active users in SharePoint Online. Of course, a lot of the people are overlapping between these things because SharePoint is powering the content within the Microsoft Teams. Um, but related on Viva Connection, Viva Connection is exposed in the Teams, um, but it's powered by SharePoint behind of the scenes and it's powered by the SharePoint framework. Now. In this particular case, we basically are going to show a, a, the steps and requirements of building a, a ISV partner offering uh, for Viva Connection. So what do we actually need to do here? Um, having a new Viva card exposed in the Viva Connection, uh, either in a desktop or in a mobile. So you'll see the mobile experience uh, in, the, in the slide. But Technically, uh, as part of this Viva Connection uh, journey and before the GA, uh, we worked with quite a few partners uh, on helping them to build their offerings in the app source uh, for Viva Connections. And as part of those uh, that work, uh, we learned about the challenges and we learned about the, the questions what the partners were having. Uh, and we realized that we certainly need to have a better uh, guidance and a reference solution available for the following partners to adapt the, the Viva Connection story. And, and what do we need to do here? Uh, just to kind of uh, explain uh, what the partner needs to be doing here. So first of all, Viva Connection experiences uh, are being built with using SharePoint Framework. Uh, again, a bit of an interesting terminology to call it still a SharePoint Framework, but uh, we'll, we'll uh, hopefully get the name changed pretty soon. Marketing is in charge uh, of running that. Now, you use the SharePoint Framework to create those Viva cards and application customizers and web parts. Uh, and we actually the story relates in all of them. The, the sample solution uh, focuses on cards, but in the same way, if you would be using a, or creating a partner uh, web part for the Viva Connection desktop, uh, and you would be hitting a multi tenant API, uh, you would actually have the similar requirements. Now, quite typically, uh, a partner uh, API offering uh, is based on uh, some sort of an API or a service being hosted uh, in the cloud. So the, the card or the web part or an application customizer hits that API to surface relevant information for the customer or for the tenant or for the user. Uh, and that's basically the setup which we have available uh, within the solution. So. Deployment of this one, uh, we have actually a, a ready to use sample available actually hosted live uh, on the internet, which is pretty cool. So you can actually step through the steps um, in the location. We'll share the, the location and guidance and all of that, and we'll show some assets uh, in a second. Uh, but we need to have an API which needs to be consented in a customer tenant. So the customer needs to be aware of this multi tenant API so that they can start using it. And then uh, as the solution, the SharePoint framework solution is getting installed, the solution API permissions needs to be approved so that the APIs can be called in that particular channel. Um, but I guess the easiest way to understand what are the bits and pieces is to actually show the solution. So let's jump on that one and Paolo is going to take lead on that. Okay, yes, thank you, Visa. So first of all, let's start having a look at the solution in action so that we can play with it and we can understand the overall goal uh, from a functional point of view. And the idea is to provide an order management solution with a UI for end users based on an adaptive card extension. And in the back end, we have an Azure function which will provide just a fake list of orders for the sake of simplicity, but which is, as Visa said, already hosted on Azure for you, so you can play with with this solution without any need to host anything on your side, but you can just play with it and learn from it. Of course, if you want, you will also find in the source code of the solution the Azure function so that you can take inspiration from it. So now let me show you the adaptive card uh, extension in action. This is my adaptive card to manage the orders. I can show you that in the settings of this adaptive card, we configure the URL of a backend service, which would be the one we are going to use in order to show uh, the functionalities. And if I will go to the preview mode of my workbench, we can see that we can easily click on this button 
button to see a list of orders, a, a fake list of orders, as I said, because this is just for the sake of providing an example. And here we can see what kind of experience the end users can have in adaptive card extension. So, for example, we can expand an item, we can have a dynamic UI. I can say that as a uh, person in charge of managing the orders, I can, for example, say that this order is now under processing and I can update it. So imagine this kind of experience from a mobile device where the user in a storage, for example, can start processing uh, an order received by the system. And you can also insert a new order, okay, new order, and you can use another card to insert a new order in the system. Uh, just for the sake of making an example, it will be the order number 11 or 11 2021 or whatever else. And this will be my customer ID, a fake one for sure. And the order will be inserted today with a specific status, which can be any of these uh, uh, values. When I will click on insert order, we will see that right now we have 10 orders in the system, but by clicking on insert order, everything was good. And by closing this, we, uh, this view, we can see that now we have 11 orders in the system. So this is just to give you an idea of what you can do and what kind of solutions you can build using the adaptive card extensions and specifically thinking about the mobile experience. Now, how did we build this solution? We have the adaptive card by itself, and we can really briefly, without digging into the code, see that we have a SharePoint framework solution built with all the technology landscape that we already know if we are SharePoint framework developer. This is just an extension built with SharePoint framework. I mean, just a class built with TypeScript and all the uh, beauty and the capabilities that we have uh, in SharePoint Framework. And then we can build all the UI elements of this solution relying on the adaptive card JSON syntax, which is one of the killer features, in my opinion, of the adaptive card extensions. Because in order to define the UI, you simply need to rely on a well-known and broadly adopted technology like the adaptive card JSON. Here, for example, you can briefly see the JSON we are using to render the list of orders. While if you want to add a new order, you can rely on another JSON definition of the UI, still based on the adaptive card JSON syntax. So really powerful, really reusable technology. This is the front end of our solution, and we are relying in uh, the back end on an Azure function. So we also have, uh, thanks to the capabilities that we have in SharePoint Framework, uh, the uh, possibility to use a back end API secured with Azure Active Directory. And that's why in our solution, we have in Azure Active Directory a, an application registered as a multi tenant app which is provided to any tenant willing to consume uh, our solution. In fact, if you have a look at this application, we can easily see that it is configured to support authentication in multiple organizations, meaning that it targets multiple tenants. How can you use it? Well, in order to have this application available, registered or known in your target tenant, you will simply need to go through a constant flow, exactly the one we were talking about in the previous demo, actually. So the users willing to use this solution in their tenant will simply need to go through a registration flow called constant flow, and we'll have the application registered in their tenant. And then we provide a backend infrastructure based on an Azure function hosted on Azure, which will provide the actual backend functionality to manage the list of orders and to provide all the create, read, update, delete, and query uh, functionalities for the list of orders. So the key components are the front end built with the adaptive card extensions, the back end built with the Azure functions, and in the middle, we have Azure Active Directory to secure the communication. Now, the really interesting part of the story, in my opinion, is that we can leverage all the knowledge that we already have whenever we uh, build a SharePoint framework solution, but now we can also extend Microsoft Viva connections. And that's why, for example, in the uh, solution, in the SharePoint framework solution, we can simply rely on the context of SharePoint because at the very end, an adaptive card extension is nothing more than yet another kind of component that we can create with SharePoint Framework. And we can rely on the SharePoint Framework context to create a new instance of a client object, an AAD HTTP client object, to consume a specific API. Which one? Well, the one that we registered as a, oh, a multi-tenant application 
in our Azure Active Directory. So this ID is precisely the one we have in Azure ID for our multi-tenant application right here. So here we are just matching that application unique ID in order to get back a client object, which will make it possible for us to easily consume the backend API. And API, I said, it, it is a Azure function one. So if we look at the function sections, we can see that we have uh, some, okay, we need to refresh this guy, or I can even switch here to show you the, the Visual Studio side of the story. We have functions like functions to get the list of orders or function to get a specific order, and generally speaking, all the create read update capabilities. Well, on the SharePoint framework side, in the order service that we are using, we simply have the same functionalities in TypeScript on the client side. So when we want to get the list of orders, we will target the URL of the API, followed by the API slash orders endpoint. And it works almost like when we use the Microsoft Graph from SharePoint framework, but now we are using a custom API that we are consuming to provide additional functionalities. The key point here is that you will have to register and enable the application in the target tenant. And that's why we decided to also share with all of you, and let me switch to my browser on GitHub, the uh, solution itself. So uh, here in the SPFX reference scenarios repository on GitHub, you can find the whole source code of the solution under the AC PMP Contoso orders sample solution. And in there, you will find the source code, as I said, both of the SPFX adaptive card extension and of the function app, together with a script to do the provisioning in your own tenant. And of course, a set of documents, of MD documents, that you can refer to in order to do the minimal path to awesome. So if you simply want to play with it, well, you can come here, you can execute the PowerShell script, providing the name of your target tenant, and the solution will be registered and available in your tenant. Meaning that you will have the constant flow applied to your tenant, and you will find the SharePoint framework solution automatically installed in your app catalog and available in your Viva uh, Connections dashboard. Or if you rather want to dig into how the solution works, you can go through all of the other documents. So you can go through the introduction and you can see a brief introduction of the solution, as well as you can see how we implemented the adaptive card extension with a step-by-step -step guidance about how we created the order service and how you can consume the backend API from the SharePoint framework point of view, as well as how we implemented the uh, backend API using an Azure function and specifically also taking care of the authorization part of the story, which is a really important part of the implementation, because here you can learn and see not only how to consume an API, but also how to secure the backend API with Azure AD and with open authorization in order to have an end-to-end, fully functional sample solution to take inspiration from. Thank you, Paolo. And, and of course, now working on um, the final location of all of these assets and documentation and all of that. So most likely we'll um, surface this sooner or later in the docs.microsoft.com. Uh, uh, but for now, they are in GitHub and in this location. And we'll put that one in the video notes and in the blog post related on the recording. So everybody can access them already. But thank you, Paolo, on that one. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Vesa. Mm -hmm.